Hello and welcome to NPTEL online certification course on microelectronics devices and devices to circuits. Uh, in our previous uh, lecture, uh, we had discussed with you the pi model, uh, the pi model and the T model. We have also discussed with you the small con condition for small signal model and uh, uh, we have seen that the requirement for small signal has been that uh, if your input signal is small enough so that your bias point does not change too much and you are in the linear region of operation of the device where amplification is almost independent of the uh, input voltage, we define that to be as a small signal. We have also understood that uh, if I have a BJT in a common emitter configuration, uh, then the amplification is typically very large of the order of few hundreds in voltage amplification, whereas common collector does not give me voltage amplification directly. Right. We also understood about the relationship between alpha and beta, where beta is basically the current gain and alpha is also a current gain in common emitter configuration and beta, beta is common uh, uh, current gain in common emitter configuration and alpha is the current gain in common base configuration. Uh, <coughs> we have seen the functionality and the operation of BJT. Uh, what we will do today is uh, have a look at uh, small signal circuit model, we will extend that uh, to C, C B and C C which means common emitter, common base and common collector. So, just to continue with yesterday's talk, uh, we will come to this point that if you have a common emitter configuration which you see, then as I discussed with you in the yesterday's uh, discussion or slide that you do have a BJT here which is an NPN transistor looking at the direction of the arrow, this is basically an NPN. Right. So, I have a p type base and e type emitter and we have got a collector which is n type. There is also a resistance R c which primarily is a resistance which is uh, seen at the collector side right. And uh, you have an input resistance also referred to as R sig here and we define R in as the input resistance or input impedance and R not as the output resistance or impedance and V not as the output voltage whereas, V sig is my input voltage um, input voltage. Now, uh, you, you see the, the, the two aspects which should be very clear at this stage that V sig is not equal to uh, V i right. So, your input voltage to the BJT will be slightly less as compared to the actual signal voltage. And the reason being the presence of this uh, R signal, right? Because these are all voltage sources, right? And these voltage sources will have a finite uh, output impedance. And as a result, uh, uh, this uh, output impedance will there will be some drop across that output impedance. And therefore, uh, the actual uh, uh, actual potential applied to the base emitted junction of a BJT will be relatively smaller smaller than uh, what is expected from here, right? Now, so we have therefore, if you uh, so this BJT is broken up into uh, equivalent small signal model as you can see the blue box here, where um, you have R pi, R pi is basically nothing but the value of R in and the reason being R pi is nothing but the resistance between the base emitter junction, right. So, when the base emitter junction is forward biased, this R pi will be of the order of few ohms, right, the order of ohms, right because it is a forward bias uh, device characteristics. Now, so, so, so the voltage across this R pi is the voltage which is basically V B E happens to be V pi. So, V pi is the voltage across, across R pi, right. So, this is sort of an input voltage which is visible to us and that when multiplied by transconductance G m uh, gives me the output current, right and that is the output. So, G m times R pi or V pi is my output current that if you multiply with the effective resistance seen from the output side. What is the effective resistance? R c parallel to R 0 right, R c parallel to R 0 and therefore, I get V 0 equals to minus G m times V i into R c parallel to R 0. So, if you look very carefully or understand it, then it is basically minus G m times V pi right R c parallel to R 0, this is the value of your V 0, right. So, if you if you break it down V m pi, uh, this will be R C R 0 upon 
R c plus R 0, right. This will be your, uh, so basically the one upon this, so minus g m v pi into R 0, R 0, fine. So, you see therefore, this if you break it up, I get uh, 1 by R 0 plus 1 by R c. Right, this is equals to your v0 for all practical purposes. Now you see, <coughs> where r0 at rc is the external uh, potential, uh, or rc is the external uh, bias which you have given, and r0 is the basically the uh, the uh, the output impedance of the BJT. Right. So the parallel combination of r0 and rc gives you the net output impedance seen by the device, and therefore I have written here that r0 is equal to rc parallel r0. Right, and that gives you a fair idea about the type of voltages which you will get. Since GM is relatively high, right? Uh, uh, so GM is high. Even if this quantity is low quantity, right? Even if it is low, I will get V zero, which is quite high, right? So therefore, uh, we can safely assume that uh, that the gain is directly proportional to GM, which is an understood phenomena. That it is actually. Um, depending on the value of gm. So, higher the sensitivity is for a BJT to work, uh, more will be the gain and therefore, more will be the output voltage with the same amount of input voltage. But please keep in mind that the V sig which you are using a signal input signal voltage is basically a small signal, right. Please keep this in mind for all practical purposes, this is basically small signal, right. And therefore, these are all small signal models. Now, if your signal is large, then you entail a nonlinearity into your GM. So, assuming GM to be constant will be uh, uh, an over assumption, right. So, uh, one important point when you do a nonlinear analysis or a nonlinear profiling, right, which is which we are not doing here, nonlinear, then GM will be actually a function of V in, in this case V pi, right. But in reality, or, or, or at least for the all understanding purposes, basic purposes, we assume that uh, GM is GM is sort of independent of independent of v in right. In reality g m might be also a function of v pi and therefore, you will entail a nonlinearity into the whole system. So, so therefore, we have understood that uh, you have we do have a problem of a nonlinearity also coming into picture, but uh, if we sustain a small value of input voltage, there will be no nonlinearity and I would expect to see a gain which is totally independent of v in and a linear gain will be available. Uh, two things we therefore, the take out from this slide is that my input impedance is r pi and output impedance is basically r c parallel to r 0 right. Now, so, so your input impedance is basically r pi which is nothing but the forward biased uh, E b j right emitter base junction the resistance offered by that is basically my E b j right. Second thing is there is also assumption that this is behaving like a uh, like a constant current source right constant current source and we are also assuming it to be ideal. So, the voltage so the impedance offered by this is infinity, but since this is in parallel of yours therefore, this does not play into picture uh, I think it is clear to you right. So, what we have therefore, assumed is that uh, the current source is basically an ideal current source as a result the output impedance is infinity. Since, it is a constant current source and the output impedance is infinity when it is in parallel to R 0 and R C right. So, that vanishes off because it is quite high a quantity right. So, in parallel combination that does not stay to a larger extent right it is always less because in parallel you remember is less than the least in series it is larger than the largest. In this case it is less than the least and therefore, we, we just neglect that particular case right ok. We then look back to the next slide and see what happens with emitter resistance. Let me see why do we at all need an emitter resistance very very important uh, issue is there when we have a emitter resistance. Till now if you remember uh, we were actually looking from the point of view of the fact that uh, we had a BJT right and uh, there was a resistance here fine and you had a bias here and this bias was varying and you did it like this then like this and then we have plus V C C and then we are doing like this sorry we are doing like this is Now, what we are trying to tell you is that no let me do small uh, 
a change here and the change is that we try to do some change in emitter configuration and what is the change? Change is that we try to put a resistance here, why we will see that later on. So, let me put a resistance R e here, right emitter resistance. All right. Now, see <coughs> the reason we want to do it is to ensure what is known as stability, ensure stability of the circuit of the circuit and I will explain to you how do I get it. See if you remember from your basic uh, class 12th even uh, undergraduate days that uh, or you can understand that whenever you have a negative feedback right, whenever you have a negative feedback you automatically have a more stable system right. The, pay, the price you pay for it is the uh, gain starts to fall down right. So, if I do a negative feedback in voltage domain which means that the output feedback output voltage is fed into the input voltage input uh, side with a 180 degree phase shifted value, uh, then I can safely assume that my overall gain will reduce because obviously, there will be principle of superposition can be applied and the two voltages will be added algebraically uh, as, as a result the overall voltage may fall down, but then uh, we also ensure that by doing a negative feedback that the overall gain is more stabilized which means that the gain with respect to change in the input is uh, much smaller. So, negative feedbacks actually gives you a stable system that is what we have learned and we know all of us possibly know this basic concept. Now, if this R e is in series to this external uh, emitter resistance, emitter resistance is applied to, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to the side of uh, emitter, then when a current I e flows through it, then there is a voltage drop which is I e times R e in which this is positive and this is negative right. So, the voltage across this which is let us suppose we assume it to be as V e appears because of I e R e right. This V will start to reverse bias my this base emitter junction right. So, as it starts to reverse bias it because why because you are applying positive side to n type and uh, maybe a negative side to p type fine or, or even a positive bias to the n side and as a result what is happening is that, that the emitter is getting more and more positive which means it is trying to reverse bias the emitter base junction and therefore, a majority current carrier is reducing and you have a large amount of minority current carrier which appears. Therefore, when you apply R e your gain starts to fall down right and you, it starts to go down and down. So, when you put a emitter resistance R e in series to the uh, to the to the B J T uh, we end up having a reduced gain right a reduced gain, but a more stabilized stabilized circuit. So, I have a reduced gain, but more stabilized circuit is, uh, is, is, is with me right. So, that is the reason why, why we do uh, why we bias with uh, uh, with emitter resistance. Now, if you look very carefully therefore, uh, in this case uh, we have an R e here which is basically this one and therefore, R in is given as beta plus 1 R e plus small r e plus capital R e right, where capital R e is basically the resistance external resistance and R e is the internal resistance. So, they, so if you go from this point to this point it is basically R e plus R e which you see in front of you right. So, that you multiply with beta plus 1 you get total R in value right, because that is the basic definition of a of a beta. Now, beta will be very much larger than 1 and therefore, I can safely write down R in to be equals to beta times R e plus R e which appears as beta R e plus beta times R e right. So, if your beta is typically very high let us say it is about 150, 200 then uh, the resistances offered by the BJT right and the circuitry gets amplified drastically right and the input temper and the input resistance becomes very very large because you can see here you are multiplying beta to both R e small r e and capital R e and as a result you will have a large amount of voltage across this terminal right. Not only that you will also have to reduce the gain of the MOS device which you are using or the uh, uh, FED device or the J, uh, uh, MOSFET which uh, sorry BJT which you are using here. Now, therefore, I get A V 0 to be equals to minus G M times R C divided by 1 plus G M R E 
right. So, it is basically gain is equals to minus g m r c divided by 1 plus g m times g m times r o fine and this is your voltage gain a v 0. Uh, we also assume for all practical purposes that R e is so large as compared to R c that R e is R c is approximately equals to R e and as a result R 0 equals to R c right. So, the output impedance of the output resistance seen by the device is approximately equal to the collector resistance offered by the VGT right. This, this two things we will be assuming for all practical purposes. If this is true uh, we can look at the left hand side figure the down figure here then we see that I have got V sig, I have got R sig which is the signal specifications which terminates at this particular point and we have alpha times I e as the collector current source right. Assuming that uh, the emitter current is fully biased and only depends upon the input bias and not on anything else I can safely say that the collector current here is equals to alpha times I e right. The I e also flows to the below side. So, I e times R e uh, is basically the voltage drop which you see on, 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 the, on, the, on the below side of the channel right and that is what you get from all these regions right. Okay. <coughs> we now come to the common base amplifier. In the common base amplifier uh, you will see that my base is grounded right. So, the previous was uh, was uh, was uh, uh, the previous was basically a, a your ba base uh, emitter grounded. Now, we are entering into, into base grounded. So, when the base is grounded I get my I am applying signal to the input side uh, on the on the on the emitter side and let us see how it works out. Uh, the problem with this uh, uh, is technically is when you apply a signal on the emitter side right when you apply a signal on the emitter side uh, you end up having a large parasitic capacitances being extracted even at relatively small voltages right. And as a result what will happen is that uh, the speed of the operation will get reduced right. So, one has to be very cautious when we design a common base amplifier in a small confined or domain. Now, with this knowledge we can safe, safely write down or we can actually give an instruction that R in is equals to R e no doubt, no doubt because of the previous discussion we can just remove it. So, if you see uh, R in equals to R e which is given here. So, I get R in equals to R e that is what you get R in equals to R e why because input resistance right input resistance which you feed here is exactly equals to R e R e is the output impedance of a BJT at this stage. So, I get A v 0 to be equals to G m times R c and R 0 equals to R c right. So, you can understand that uh, your R 0 is typically very large quantity and therefore, G m times R c is very large and that is the reason uh, you do have a large amplification in their case in their uh, this thing as compared to other uh, uh, experiments or other uh, this thing because the same reason is that your GM is relatively independent of the applied uh, currents right. A common collector amplifier as the name suggests it is also referred to as common emitter or uh, emitter follower amplifier and is given by this formula. In this case please understand the voltage gain is approximately equals to 0 and that is what uh, we all understand that common collector is not a very good amplifier or it cannot amplify small signal to large values right and that is quite important that they cannot do it. And since they cannot do it they, they, they are used for some other purposes, but not for amplification purposes right and that is what we come to know right because A v 0 equals to 1. So, it is basically phase change which is looking into and nothing else than that right and it is given by uh, alpha times I e which is basically the actual current source which is available to us R l is already there R signal, signal and V signal is also available output impedance of current and resistances are also available with me and gives me quite interesting result as far as uh, common collector or a common uh, uh, this is given. So, let me recapitulate uh, what we did uh, common emitter configuration is the most easiest and the most uh, uh, most uh, um, uh, high gain can be obtained from uh, common emitter configuration. The common base uh, amplifier user high frequency amplifier it will low input signal right. So, input signal is quite low and therefore, you use a high amplifier design. 
uh, the emitter follower finds application as a voltage buffer right uh, for collecting a high source and pass it on to the right source. So, if you do a common collector you are actually uh, though your amplification will be low voltage to voltage, but your transits will be very 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 fast which means that if you want to compare the output impedance of a particular system with your system on the collector side if you put the resistance is small and therefore, you can easily match, uh, match the low input in impedance uh, design. Uh, so, the emitter follower finds application as voltage buffer for connecting a high source to a lower resistance source right. So, emitter follower generally used typically used for the purpose of buffering or the for purpose of uh, uh, connecting uh, between two points through a network right and that is what is emitter follower is all about it is basically we require it the power to be low and it is excessively low right and that is very very important. Uh, with this uh, we have almost finished this section, but before we move forward let me give you a brief question error a question maybe right. So, I have a uh, question. So, I have a transistor whose beta is equals to 100 right and applied voltage is 10 volts. So, I get I c. So, I, I need to find out first of all beta this is 3 volts. So, I need to find out I b first. So, to do that in this loop let me find out that this is 0.7 right you are given 3 volts. So, what you get from here is that I b will be equals to V b b V b b minus V right this this drop divided by r which is 100 k and if you solve it comes out to 0 0.023 milliampere right. So, the amount of current which one flows is typically very small. Uh, so, therefore, I c will be equals to 100 times 0 0.023 milliampere. So, I c will be there for approximately 23 milliamps. Uh, so, it is typically this much amount of current will be required for all practical purposes. Now, if you if you again go back and explain the relative slides here, uh, we can we can safely show show that that I uh, that that V C is equals to V C C minus I C R C right. Uh, in this case we find out this to be as plus 3.1 3.1 1 volt. Now, if you want to find out the value of R e it is V t by I e V t is uh, 25, 25 millivolt per decade divided by uh, V t is uh, V t is uh, divided by I e actually I e will be V t divided by 99 and this comes out to be approximately equals to 10.8 hours which means that 10.8 hour 10.8 uh, ohm is the is the emitter resistance offered by the emitter to the input system right transconductance gm can be written as ic by vt and therefore this can be written as 92 milliampere per voltage minus right r pi beta by gm we get 100 by 92 kilo so, this is how we do a small signal analysis as far as this course is concerned and gives you an idea about how a small signal analysis works even for a single transistor or for a BJT uh, a transistor wherein BJT starts to find out new methodologies to uh, destabilize itself right and therefore, these are the few areas which people are working and quite interesting work is going on. Now, <coughs> so we what we did was we used a common emitter configuration uh, for the best configuration and we and and we and then and then what we saw was that uh, that uh, that uh, uh, for if you, if your gain is typically very large bulk gain is very very large and your your actual gain of the device gain is relatively small we can still uh, have that as the best suited amplifier the common base is used for high frequency 
uh, due to low input resistance. It is generally used for high frequency amplifier, right? Uh, the emitter follower finds application as a voltage buffer for connecting a high source to a low resistance path, right? And this we have done for emitter follower, we have done and we did for common base as well, right? Uh, we will therefore at this stage recapitulate what we did. We did emitter color common emitter base configuration. We also looked into the fact that given a, a result or a given this thing, which one is the best form of configuration and for that common emitter is the best form of configuration as far as the results are concerned. Fine. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. We will come back to you next time with more information. Thank you.